What is going on guys and welcome back to Hague TV and this is the Hague TV 300th video special. I want to give you guys a little bit of a behind the scenes look at some of the programs I use to make my videos. And really with this video I'm just trying to help you guys who do do video recording or want to get into it. I want to try to help you guys and uh, learn from mistakes I've made and tips and things I've done to make my life easier. To hopefully make you guys' lives easier as you're starting or continuing on with it. Here are some of the programs I'm going to be going over, not in huge great detail because there's YouTube videos for all of this out there. If you want to learn how to use these programs right, they are the ones to watch. I am no means an expert on any of this stuff, but I know how to do it well enough for my application. Now what I'm actually using to record this right now, as you can see, is OBS. And as you can see, I'm actually not recording my uh, mic through there. I am actually using this program right here that's called Audacity. I recommend it highly to anyone who's doing local recording or just normal YouTube recording and uh, not streaming. If you're streaming, your audio mic and your uh, audio from the game is all going to be on one track. That's normal. But if you're someone like me that records your audio and video in a non-streaming format like local recording like OBS uh, names it, Using Audacity is a great tool because it can greatly improve your audio and it, to me it just always sounds better. You don't, you never run that risk of your game being way too loud over your voice and then losing a whole recording over it because you can control your game volume separately and now you can control your audio separately and like I said there's tons of tutorials out there it's free software if you're doing any sort of recording and like I said, you're not streaming, just use Audacity. It's going to make your audio so much better. It's a one tiny little step more for you in the editing department, but I'll show you how to make it even easier. But let's move on. Like I said, I am using OBS. There's a crap ton of tutorials on how to use it. And if you like the whole streaming format, you can get a lot of the Kutu apps and just make an awesome broadcast. Now, what I personally use for my videos is actually a program called Marillus Action, which is why you see this little FPS counter up here. That's because uh, I'm actually, like I said, I'm using OBS. Normally, I would use Action, but I want to kind of show you this. Awesome program. I have been using it for a year and a half. It was totally worth the 30 bucks I think I paid for it. I mean, this thing has given me about zero problems like any program it is going to shit to bed every once in a while but for the most part i absolutely love it and like you see there's not much in here it's all just simple basic things it's that's that's my one gripe about obs here is it just you go through all the settings and whatnot and it's just a huge cluster but you know what with action you have this this is all just easy freaking, just set it up, high settings real quick, and get going. There's no mess. There's no having to mess with a bunch of different settings and waste a bunch of time. It's just more click and go. And uh, normally what I use to record iRacing with is the active screen. I don't believe the uh, that iRacing will get picked up by the game setting here. And actually, before iRacing actually brought in their Windows List Borderless win, Window List Bordered mode, I did actually have to use this, and I would have to line up and crop and stretch the video, which just doesn't look good. So once big thank you iRacing Window List Bordered mode is amazing. But like I said, this thing will record in AVI, MP4, and if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can use NVIDIA Invenic, which again is still MP4, but it just saves so much memory. It's not popping out these gigantic ass files. And one thing I love about it, 60 FPS. And for some reason, you can do 120, which I don't know why you'd want to do that because YouTube doesn't support it. But as you can see, all these videos in here, I have used Marillus Action for any desktop video you've ever seen me do that wasn't a live stream. I have used this program. 
I will stand by it. It's an amazing program. I highly suggest you guys test it out. And even, you can download a trial. It does have a Marillus Action watermark over the top here that will be overlaid into the videos until you buy it. But you guys will at least get a chance to see if you like it. The quality-wise, look at any of my videos. It, it, I think this program speaks for itself. I cannot say how much I love this. But let's actually get into the whole recording process itself. I'm going to hop in here like I was recording, show you some of the steps I do to make recording easier for me. Let's see how long iRacing takes to load. And just for those of you who are asking, or not asking because you're watching this, who might be wondering, when you record, this uh, does not show up. You There's a setting you can click, so you're not seeing this actually be recorded in your videos. It, it pretty much hides and then comes back when you're done recording. But pretty much like any normal video, I'd be doing that. But since I'm in border uh, bordered mode, I can sit and actually alt tab, bring up action. Okay, it's up everything. But one trick I do uh, to line up my audio and video, since again it is split into two separate tracks, is I actually just grab Audacity and I record myself starting the audio track. Now I'll hop into Vegas and show you guys what I mean by that, but. For those of you who might be uh, having trouble with uh, trying to get lined up, I never thought about doing this until I randomly thought about it. For the longest time, I always did the normal uh, like three, two, one click, and I'd either uh, let's hop out of here. I'd go like three, two, one click, and then try to line it up because I would hear the audio. Or if you're using a program like Sony Vegas, you can see the audio peaks, and then you can see the video, like as you click the mouse. And you'd have to try to line it up that way, or I'd try to line it up like let's say I was talking mid race. You'd be able to see as I'm doing this, so I'd be trying to line up the audio with the little green on the voice chat, which again is another giant pain in the ass, until I figured this out. So, let's hop out of iRacing here. That's that's honestly how I start all my videos now. And I don't have to worry about stuff being out of sync anymore. So, we're going to hop into Sony Vegas. Actually, I'm going to load iRacing back up and leave it in the background because I have another thing I want to show you afterward. Close out of that. Ah! All right, let's hop on the desktop here. Oh, this is gonna be a little bit more of a pain than I thought. Dang it, racing! I don't know why I thought that was a good idea, but what I normally do is uh, let me try to minimize so you guys can see it at least halfway decently. Here, I got a video track from my last Gen Six race, the uh, one where I got taken out of pit road from yesterday. As you can see, I always just let the uh, I always let Sony Vegas base the uh, pro video settings on the media, which pretty much means I recorded a 60 FPS video. It's gonna hop. It's gonna be in 60 FPS. I don't have to set it to 60 FPS. Now I've got my audio. Just gonna pop that in there like that and make this in full screen. I apologize. I am new to these videos, so I'm probably gonna ramble. But I hope you guys get what I mean. And as you can see, right. Uh, let me drag this over, drag you over, and as you can see here, there's my Audacity track. So what I'm going to do is scroll in here to the video timeline, and just, you can see I'm messing with my mic there. Just keep going forward, keep going forward as soon as I get it set. I'm going to click frame by frame. Oop. Or I'm just going to go to the end because I'm a retard. I'm sorry, like I said, these how-to videos, not really my thing. I, I kind of suck at stuff like this, but in an effort to try to help some of you newer YouTubers out, you can watch me fail and learn what not to do. But yeah, just sit, scroll through, and I'm pretty sure this will work in other video 
editing softwares. But see, I clicked record there, but the audio does not start until right there. As soon as you see the colors go from dark gray to light gray, that's what you know is starting to record audio. So what you're going to do is just drag... God damn it. If I wasn't recording, I wouldn't have this problem. But what you're going to do is just sit and drag your audio, line it up to that exact moment. So right now, these audio, this audio and video is synced up, so what I can do is just... For those of you who use Sony Vegas, just easy thing to do. It's just uh, group, create new, and now everything's lined up like that. It's all one thing, so I can split, split, delete, and then it's still like that. But yeah, now I know that through this, wherever I'm talking, it's lined up right. And that has been a problem for me before. I thought about doing this because it could be a split second off, so I'd have to sit, watch quite a bit of the race, and try to re hear my reactions to stuff, when sometimes they're not as on time as I think they could be, like something could happen, but I won't say anything exactly when I thought I could have. So, just by doing that little trick of lining up the audio, you know the audio and video are always going to be in sync exactly as how you are recording them. I probably rambled on about that enough, but pretty much that's it. You have your video edited up and done, get it uploading. Now you need a thumbnail. And for this, I'm going to have to hop back into iRacing because there's a few different ways of doing this. I'm actually going to hop on some tri centripetal circuits so it loads up even faster. There is the whole, I think is Windows button print screen. We'll take a screenshot of all your monitors. Or if you just have one, it will just take a picture like that, which is the way I've done it before to get 1920 by 1080 pictures. If you have more than one monitor, it will take a picture of all of it, and then you have to edit it down. And oh, really failed tech. Okay, back from a quick edit because yeah. Now at this moment, for those of you who don't know, Control F12. Although really, who doesn't know how to use the advanced camera by now? Just kind of get around. Find a cool looking shot or whatever. And there you go. Here might be what you want your picture to be. Now you have a couple different options. Like I said, you have the control print screen, which let me see if that actually works. Yep. You just saw it went dark. It just took a giant ass photo of all three of my screens. If you don't want to do that, I have a program right, oop, not there. Right here. It's called Push. P U U S E. H. Free program. Absolutely love it. Now what this uh, program called Push lets me do is hit Control Select 4 and then I, if you guys can see this little arrow this lets me uh, dictate whatever let's say I want to take just a picture of this guy's head. I can just click do something like that. You heard that little noise? We'll go to Google. And what it does, it pastes, it puts a link in your, uh, it pretty much just auto copies a link. And now that does look sketchy as hell, it's not. You click enter, hey, there's the guy's head. Simple as that. Now what I do actually for all my videos is, uh, I literally just use push. I go from one side of the screen, drag it, do that. It sometimes does take a sec. Sometimes it does fail. You will have to try a couple times. But I freaking love this program. You can ask anyone in my team speak. I use it all the time just to send them random crap. But again, paste and go. And there's a thumbnail right there. Now after that, what I do is... uh, I actually still use GIMP a little bit. I do have Photoshop and I do use it for making cars. But as of now, uh, GIMP is my preferred method of photo editing for simple things like thumbnails. And for anyone doing YouTube, the uh, standard thumbnail size is 1280 by 720. It's not 7250. You'll do that, and I'll bring it up like this. Uh, let's use my late model picture. I'm going to leave this like halfway blown 
blown up just so you guys can see easily a uh, couple of quick things I do in my thumbnails. Now I know a lot of my thumbnails before looked like shit, but recently I found a few little tricks using GIMP to improve them a little bit. All my uh, thumbnails I go to Enhance, Unsharpen Mask, and I'll bump this thing down to uh, 3. I'll show you 5, but you just want a little bit of a sharper image I found. Like, just take a look at the full before. There's it afterward. It doesn't look that different, but if you saw some of the black in here became a little darker, the reds pop a little bit more. And uh, I do brightness contrast, and I'll put this to about 20, and I'll put this to about 20. And there's that. Let me undo brightness contrast, undo unsharpened mask. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it does sharpen it up, and I'll throw a couple logos on there. And like I said, I am by no means a photo editing expert. This is literally the Hag TV way of doing things. I am not hugely computer tech savvy. I've just learned a few things through the process of doing YouTube. And uh, that's really what goes into making a video on this channel. And actually, I'll show you one more thing. For my Xbox stuff, I have a uh, Elgato HD60. Which, another amazing pro product if I can get this dumb thing to load. Again, really freaking simple layout. I love programs like this. Just give me a couple options. Like, look, here's here's all the advanced things. Like, you can put where you, uh, your location and everything. Sharing, I don't usually tend to do that. But, uh, let me... Go through... Where's it at? There we go. Settings. Here's all the settings. Like, it's... You can adjust the uh, picture and whatnot, the color. But for the most part, it's all just freaking simple. I, I cannot say enough about Elgato in the game capture and Merlis Action. They're the only two products I have ever used on any of my videos. So if you're looking for cheap, well, the Agata was, the HD60 is probably still in the 100 buck range, but it's completely worth it. 1080p, 60 FPS, beautiful picture. Uh, to me, it's a gaming must have. Uh, and Merlis Action. There is other programs like Fraps, DX Story, uh, Bandicam. Which is what Empty Box uses, and another couple people, on, a person, Josh Matlock, on the team, is going to be using Bandicam, uh, was telling me about it. I might give it a try, and if I do, I'll let you guys know. But for right now, this is what I use. And I'm sorry you guys have had to listen to me ramble for this long, but I've been wanting to do a special video like this before. I wanted to do a little bit, just showing you what I do. And hopefully, hopefully it helps you out. If not, if you see something I could be improving on with some of these programs, feel free to let me know. I am always open to get to getting better at doing YouTube. I hope you guys did enjoy this video, and here's to another 300 videos.